everybody. Welcome to Contra Talk. My name is Richard Henry, and I've got a special guest today, Dwayne Atkinson. Uh, he is a husband and a father. He's a prolific podcaster and all-around uh, wonderful guy. We've talked uh, we talked on his podcast a while back as well, and uh, we're just getting to know each other a bit more. So welcome to the show, uh, and uh, tell us a little bit about yourself. Hey, man. First of all, thanks for having me. Uh, yeah. I never take an invite uh, lightly. Anytime anybody want me on this show, so big shout out to you for that. Um, like you mentioned, I am a father first. Uh, well, let me back that up. I'm a Christian first. I'm a husband second, and uh, a father third. Um, uh, live in Fayetteville, North Carolina area. I also started my own podcast called The Bar Podcast, and uh, that grew into a podcast network of over twenty other podcasts that I manage. Um, uh, and that's kind of my claim to fame. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. And you say you have four kids, right? I do. <laughs> I do. Right. Three girls and uh, one boy. Yeah, uh, me always, too. Oh, okay. I always yeah. tell people my kids are the picture of God's grace, man. My oldest is actually my wife's great niece. She adopted okay. her before we met. Oh, wow. My, uh, second child is my son that I had before marriage. Uh, but that birth actually led me towards Christ, where I know we'll talk about. Wow. And then me and my wife have uh, two two baby girls together. They came five years after being married. And, you know, it was mm. a miracle from God for sure. Wow. Well, praise God. That's great. Um, <clears throat> well, sorry. You've uh, obviously you're you're all a lot of people, I think, will know you even just talking right now. But uh, tell us a little bit about just kind of how you came to faith. You just mentioned that yeah. now, how, how you came to know the Lord and, and that journey there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, I grew up in the church, man. I'm, I'm from a small town called Turkey, North Carolina. Uh, okay. Most people never heard of it. Then when I say Turkey, they think of Istanbul and all of those places. But there's a little town called Turkey, North Carolina, where I grew up uh, playing the drums in church. Uh, you know, my mom and dad cleaned the church on Friday night. So I was always in the church. Um and I, you know, I had the the perception of godliness. Everybody knew Dwayne was a good kid. His mom was, you know, parents was Christian and all of that. But my heart was far from God, man. Um, and so I knew how to act church, but I, it wasn't, you know, it wasn't a real walk or real uh, regeneration. Um, and, you know, being a musician, an athlete, uh, you know, I, I kind of ran the streets a little bit, you know, as far as uh, women and things like that. And God mm -hmm. used that. Uh, use my pride to uh, humble me. And um, uh, it's an old school um, phone, you know, when you had to actually call people and not cell phones. Mm -hmm. uh, I got called on three way, uh, you know, and you don't know because there's no call ID or anything on the phone. And so that night, uh, two uh, ladies called me on three way and, and that, you know, kind of broke my pride because I thought I was good at being a player. And, and so that night, uh, you know, God humbled me, man. And I rode down. I remember I was at my mom and dad house. I rode off the bed onto my knees and I said, you know, uh, God, I'm making a mess of my life. You know, uh, please help me. Please come into my life. That night um, I was saved. I regenerated. I wish I could say it was happily ever after. Uh, unfortunately, um, what I did, because I have the background of being a musician and an athlete, the first place I looked for uh, preachers, it was TBN. Mm -hmm. uh because think about it you know i'm thinking the best pre the best athletes on tv the best musicians on tv so where are the best preachers on tv at least i thought <laughs> <laughs> if only that were true exactly were true. exactly exactly so uh fast forward man um i fell into the word of faith charismatic movement pretty hard pretty you know was going to a mega church in south carolina um you know, my wife was on staff. I mean, we went through that whole, you know, really hard, deep phase of charismania and uh, and prosperity gospel and name it and claim it. And uh, well, yeah, it's my convergence story. I'm kind of giving you the whole, <laughs> the whole spiel. Dude, yeah, the whole thing. Absolutely. <laughs> okay. So uh, so in, in the midst of that, because uh, actually some people may recognize me from uh, Dear World Christian, Christian podcast. I was on there recently. But in the midst of that. Um, I uh, connected with the New Apostolic Reformation because for me, mm. it was always about like, you know, I want more of God. I want more. You know, I feel like my mom and dad, they're Baptist. Oh, they don't they don't know. They don't know about speaking in tongues and they just old school. And then I got to a certain point where, you know, I was like, oh, I want more. I want to get into the apostolic. And so I, I, I fell into that world as well. And me and my wife were actually 
released air quotes as apostles uh yeah yeah that used to be in a, a title of mine you didn't know you had a former apostle on your show Dude, yes i knew there were still apostles i knew it i just, so, I just uh, had this feeling yeah man so so we we had that man we were in that world and uh and and just the, the heavy conviction of god and and honestly uh really uh solid biblical people uh challenging me you know, mm -hmm. what was the thing, you know, a lot of people don't like confrontation, but if it wasn't for confrontation, you know, I don't know if I would have second guessed what I was doing and, you know, mm -hmm. things like that. And so uh, getting those uh, put getting that pushback and getting those challenges actually led me out of uh, the New Apostolic Reformation. I denounced that um, a good friend of mine uh, uh, heard me talking about Calvinism. And, and so he was like, you want to learn about it? And so we actually uh pulled me into his office uh we worked together and we went through the westminster confession and uh at the end of it i was like hmm besides the baptism thing i think i agree with everything you said you know besides sprinkling the babies and so <laughs> from from that man don't um, tell that to jason oh i know i know he we, we're he'll he'll be he'll be a baptist in heaven it's okay That's right. That's right. <laughs> but uh but but after that man he he actually exposed me to Ligonier and grace to you and all of those things and and i've just began to just download all that stuff and just really you know go hard and and find a love for it and that's actually what led me to podcast and being inspired by uh so much information that was given to me and and so much so many resources and so the bar podcast merely is a podcast that direct people to great resources like yourself that's why i interviewed you um and and other uh you know people that do video people that do podcasts people that write books artists mm -hmm. all kind of folks and so uh that was kind of the lead up to uh to where we are today right on well praise god man yeah i mean it's <clears throat> it's something i mean i pastor a small church and it's it, you know, small doesn't really size doesn't really matter. No. Uh, but I get to I get to know people a lot better uh, than if it was much larger. But there's a lot of messed up stuff, right? We're all we're all messed up, right? And it's just the this admission of actually, are you really messed up or not? Mm -hmm. Like, I mean, you are. Everybody is. But there's just like most people don't admit it. You know, mm -hmm. and that, mm -hmm. I think that's a lot of people just you know, out in the world or like you're saying, you kind of grow up Christian or, oh, well, you know, we went to, we went to mass on Christmas and Easter and this sort of thing. So right. most people have some understanding of the faith, Christianity, church, but there's this kind of like, well, once I go to church, you know, it rejuvenates me, which I think is, I think I've not studied in a long time, but very Roman Catholic, mm -hmm. you know, and kind of, you know, you're getting those graces in the sacraments, which of course I wouldn't say, and you wouldn't say it's even remotely biblical, right. uh, but Nevertheless, it's something that I think most people still have, even in, you know, Baptist territory that both sure. you and I are in. So for sure, got to battle it, but it's good. It's a good battle. Um, as far as. So you mentioned, so you, so you are Baptist, right? Is that right? I mean, yeah, like that matters, but yeah, Baptist yeah, no, thing. no. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm, I'm definitely Baptist. Uh, I definitely, uh, I guess, lean or believe, you know, 1689 uh confessional um i'm I, i'm attending a southern baptist uh yeah. uh which which is is interesting uh <laughs> being being you know kind of where i stand I, I love those guys um yeah. they they are perfect for my family um you know some some places we we kind of you know and, and they, they call them open-handed uh things you know because some of those guys are continuationists and things like mm. that and i'm like hmm okay i, I love y'all though <laughs> yeah, yeah the, the sbc is a very bi a big mix i mean it is um you know i i went to uh seminary southern seminary and then uh pastor southern baptist church now but you know even in my experience and it's limited of course but sure. most southern baptists just want the bible you yeah, know, we just want to, We just want Jesus. Let's just. How does this work? Now, there's a lot of weird little things that go along with those extra stuff that I don't usually agree with. Right. Um, it, but it's it's there's hills to die on. There's hills not to die on. Exactly. And uh, yeah, I, I think there's there's still much good in the SBC at least at the moment. Hopefully, sure. something the tide will shift in the next year or two or three, but we'll see. Mm -hmm. Um, you mentioned so coming to faith. And, and obviously you had, like you said, your own admission issues, right? You're making mm -hmm. a mess of your life. The world says you should embrace that. You know, you should embrace and say, you know what? People owe you 
I mean, <laughs> Dwayne, man, I man, look at your skin color. I mean, you you've had a rough life. You've had a really hard. In fact, uh, you should get, you should ask Richard to apologize to you. You should have other people like Richard apologize. You should get money from the government. You should do. Do you do you subscribe to that, Dwayne? Do you do you, do you <laughs> want you want handouts? Not at all, man. Not at all. I am. And what, uh, why? Why not? Why not? So, you know, I'll, so I'll play devil's so, advocate. <laughs> Sure, sure. So let, let's back up, man. Um, you know, growing up in Turkey, North Carolina, man, uh, it's Eastern North Carolina. Mm-hmm. Um, I experience real racism, like, 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 like pulling to the gas station and hey, no, you can't come here in word, please step out. Um, or not please step out, but get out. Um, I've experienced, you know, pull over to the side of the road to, you know, thank you, you know, in a rural area to, to, to take a leak and you hear the, the shotgun clack and, you know, I've experienced that. So number one, I, when you experience real racism, uh, <laughs> this social media, you know, somebody owes me uh, idea is it goes out the window um, because mm-hmm. you, you understand, number one, you understand that. Uh, especially if you're a believer, let us start there. If you're a believer, you understand that no, we're, we're all depraved. We're all fallen. we you know, uh, that, that sin is, is, it's a sin, you know, mm. it's a sin like any other sin. It's not the unpardonable sin. It's not the sin that cannot be forgiven any of that. Uh, so that, that start there. But then when you're talking about just handouts and reparations, like I, I don't need that. You know, right now in in this America that I love, I can do anything I want to do. Mm. There's no, it, there's nothing stopping me from doing anything I want to do. There's no, there's no system in place that's going to keep me from being, you know, it, there's no system in place that's going to keep me from having, which it has happened. One of the number one podcasts on the Christian uh, podcast thread or whatever. Just thinking, I produ- I produced that podcast. Number right. one on Apple iTunes. I mean, no, nobody can stop me on that. You know, no, if, if I want to take this thing to a place where I want to be CEO or whatever, can, nobody can stop me, man. I don't need a handout. I don't need a, a, a give me. I don't need a add a boy. I don't need any of that, man, mm-hmm. because I know, you know, through, through the grace of God, of course, there's, there's, no, there's no system in place. There's nothing that's going to prevent that from me. I don't need. I don't need I don't need a handout. Like I don't even want it, man. I don't even like it from on the on a regular like friend level. Like, yo, you know, I'm hurting, whatever. Like, hey, look, I give you 20 bucks. Now nah, you're good. I'm gonna figure yeah. it out. That's just my my thing, man. And you know, some people kind of like, oh, this to pull them up by the bootstraps thing, like whatever. Like yeah. it, get to work, man. You know, like let's do let's let's not sit back and, and play the victim card and, and all of that. I, I'm not a victim. You know, just and and I know you didn't mention this, but like, like, like white privilege, like black. I got privilege. Like it don't matter. You know what I mean? Like there's no privilege. We all are depraved in Christ. We all have, you know, we have a stance that we can that we can do anything we want to do, man. Mm. Uh, That that you can tell I'm I'm getting excited, man, because that's 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 a place for me. (laughs) That's that's a place for me, man. I don't I don't I don't agree with that. Um, I I don't. I just don't, man. I just, I can't even. I don't know. Go ahead, man. Go ahead with the next. <laughs> no, no. I mean that's good. And honestly, I mean it's. I think I think the thing, at least for me. I mean, so I'm originally from California, uh, and I know a lot of people know that watching. And in California, it's for lack of a better word, it's different. At least my again, sure. We all have experiences, but I saw very very little um, partiality, racism, anything like that. Now, mm-hmm. obviously, you know, I'm. Western European, right? But even people talking about it and or seeing it from afar didn't exist. And I think a lot of it's, I mean, and I think a lot of it's because there was no, you know, chattel slavery in California. There was mm-hmm. no Jim Crow. There was no mm-hmm. real redlining or anything like that. And so in one sense, I have my own, you know, story to tell, at, you know, for what it's worth. But it's fascinating because some people with that story... Uh, want to bow down or 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 make people feel a certain way because of, I guess, cultural pressure. I don't know. I'm still trying to figure it out. It's been a right. few years of really trying to like, why exactly? I was like, you know, I, I'm really sorry for the slavery in the past. And it's like, I mean, okay. Like, did you, or did I own or you or what? Like, I, why are we only, and why do we only go back 
a hundred, two, three hundred years. Why not a thousand years? I mean, I'm certain some of my relatives were enslaved by Rome, right? Like, so sure. where am I? Where's my money, right? Where's yeah. my reparations? You know, I'm I mean, certain word... some of my relatives uh, were slave owners, and actually, my last name is Atkinson, uh, which you know, it, it's a it's an interesting story. Uh, we were the Atkinson slaves, um, mm. and so there was two sets of Atkinson slaves. Like people in in this area know there's two sets of Atkinsons. One set where the Atkinson slaves, they, you know, there was no like cross, I guess you could say cross breeding or whatever. And then the set that I'm a part of was the Atkinson slaves that actually uh, the, the master father children through that lineage. So, oh, wow. Yeah. So it, it go like, like, okay, my yeah. great, great granddaddy was a slave owner, you know, I guess yeah. I owe somebody something, you know, or even if you go back to Africa, you know, I, the, the Europeans didn't come and just kidnap Africans and put them on the ship. No, they were already kidnapped. They were already enslaved in Africa, and then they were sold at the coast to Europeans. Like it, it's that's, it's just pointless, man, to, to take that line of thought, man, to think that somebody owes you something, or some, or you owe me an apology just because your skin is white, not knowing you know your background, or like you said, going back a thousand years to see you know who else was enslaved. Like slavery didn't start with the you know. The, the the Atlantic slave trade that that's not where yeah. it started. Yeah, and that's and that's I think something that really people just want to just continue to spin. You know, not to dwell too much on that, but I mean, slavery's been around for centuries and centuries and centuries, and and it's been heinous and so so evil. And then others where it's been like, well, this is just the way it is. It's not as bad as they say it is, quote unquote. But I mean, even like Saint Patrick. Right. I mean, he was he was captured and put as a slave and then went back to Ireland. He's not from Ireland. Most people don't know that. Um, and, you know, he I mean, because he was originally um, Greek. And so he was on the coast there and Vikings basically came, stole him, took him back. And then he had the vision, the whole thing, supposedly, and everything else. And and then he went back and witnessed to uh, Ireland and, you know, turned the whole place around. And so it's the redemption in Christ is so much bigger and better. For than sure. the the flesh, you know, the the melanin and the hair color and the this and the that, all the outward stuff that you can you can't change it necessarily, mm -hmm. but it's so small when mm -hmm. you really think about it as well. It's very, very trivial. For sure. Uh, no, I appreciate you share, sharing that. That's it's good. It's good. Um, the tell us a little bit about more a little bit tongue twister. Tell us a little bit more about the bar podcast and just kind of your work online and maybe who you work with and just again those desires to to proclaim the gospel and how you're doing that sure sure so uh like i mentioned you know the reason why i started was to you know provide resources and and people uh and point people in the right direction um and it started six years ago um and i made a uh public promise to every tuesday to provide an episode so uh, for the last six years, every Tuesday, I've dropped an episode interview style um, with different guests, uh, over 300 and something. I lost count uh, every now and again. I just look back to, to see. But um, it, that, that's really like it, to go back to the genesis of it. The original vision for the bar was to have like panel discussions with my friends. I have some, you know, really talented friends, very knowledgeable friends. One of those friends being Virgil Walker. A lot of people know who he is. And so um, the, the original idea was to have us all on the show. But anybody knows if you're trying to get more than one person together at any time, it's hard to get people on the same schedule. And so what I told those guys was, hey, I'm going I'm to do this podcast. I'm going to build it up. Once I build it up, when you guys want to start a show, you know, we'll figure it out. Um, and so. I did that. I, I put in the work. I put in the time, interviewed uh, some amazing people. Uh, some people were amazing at the time. Now they woke. So, you know, I don't want to mention them, but <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> but that happens. That happens, you know. But um, but so one of the first shows that was part of the network uh, was is Just Thinking. Uh, Just Thinking uh, is Daryl Harrison and Virgil Walker. And um I actually interviewed Dare Harrison because of a blog he wrote about how the how wokeness is destroying the black church. Um, and so I uh, interviewed him and I was like, man, this guy reminds me of Virgil. And Virgil was like, man, let me talk to him. So Virgil actually kind of hosted the bar and, and did a show uh, interviewing Daryl. And it was really good. Still one of my most downloaded shows. Uh, and then afterwards, I was like, bro, like 
y'all need to, this needs to be a podcast, man. And so uh, after Daryl told me no, because that's Daryl's immediate response is no. Um, <laughs> and then uh, Virgil talked to him and, and they, they, they got together, man. And the rest is history, man. Those guys uh, just thinking has grown into an actual ministry. Um, it has its own 501c3. We're actually building a studio in Atlanta uh, where we have partnered with G3 Ministries, where Virgil is currently working. So let me say this, too. So just think it started. Put Daryl and Virgil on the map with that audio out there that my my vision, my podcast, Daryl uh, received a job with Grace to you where he's a social media dean of social media at Grace to you. Oh, wow. And then also Virgil has a job with G3 because of that whole, you know, that exposure. Wow. And so uh, it, it's just a beautiful thing to watch develop and, and grow. Um, and then, uh, you know, connecting with other people, people seeing what we're doing with the bar and with just thinking. Uh, another really well-known podcast is called Thankful Homemaker with uh, Marcy. And uh, Marcy has a huge following and she's just so humble. And she brought came into the network. And, um, and then it was, you know, I, I get requests all the time about joining the network and, you know, people are going to see this and ask about joining the network, but, yeah. but, but really it's a, it's a screening process, man. Um, but that's been kind of the vision, man. And the two things that I really hang my hat on when it comes to the network and podcasting in general is being biblically sound and then also having good quality. Those are two things that when people see my logo, I want them to associate that you know, kind of like you see NBC, you know, okay, mm -hmm. this is that network. When you see the bar podcast network, I want you to associate, you know, biblically sound and, um, good good quality uh one of the best compliments i ever got <laughs> when it comes to the network uh doreen virtue said that when i see the uh it's with the bar network i don't even read it i just repost it because i know it's good you know so nice wow that that that's that's kind of what i was going after just uh having a place where people know and can trust the content you know with so much craziness out there and so much uh just just wild stuff i just wanted to have like a hub where people can say okay it's bar podcast network i can trust it yeah. Amen. No, that's good. Um, I might, I'm going to throw a fastball on you, Please. maybe, maybe a curveball, not intentionally, but something. So again, and I've spoken about this a little bit, uh, again, being from California, didn't really have much experience at all with anything, right. With mm -hmm. like what Larry said, coming to Kentucky for seminary and hearing from well-meaning, it seems, uh, evangelical professing believers at a seminary writing books, etc. not really knowing about woke, although I'd heard about, you know, woke church, but wasn't really sure about that. I'm talking three or four years ago now. Um, some professors at my uh, alum, my school, my former school, uh, we use terms. And I want to like hit on a couple things. One racial reconciliation. What, what does that, again, for me, like, I feel like a lot of people are in my boat where they've not really experienced it. I've got a quite, quite a few people all over the place listening from different areas, especially West Coast. is just, it's all foreign. We just kind of watch it from afar and we think, I don't know what's going on. I don't know what to say. I don't know what to think. As Christians, we should be concerned with truth. We should be concerned with the gospel. We should be concerned with loving people authentically, biblically, et cetera. And we shouldn't just be like, well, you know, the guy I like politically doesn't like it. Therefore I'm going to not like it too. Or the gal or this person or the governor or this, you know, person I follow on Twitter, I'm just going to follow these people. I don't want to do that. Now, sometimes they line up, but a lot of times they don't. Um, and I know a lot of people, you know, most more Christians are Republican than Democrat, mm -hmm. blah, blah, blah. And this and that, depending on melanin and where you're from and all, I get all those like political things and there's not necessarily anything wrong or right even about it. But something like racial reconciliation, I hear that and I think, OK, so he's talking about it and they're talking about it. But what am I wh where are we? Because like if you're reconciling, eh, how am I supposed to think about this? Dwayne? What do you got? So um, we have a saying that, you know, you can't reconcile uh, skin color. Uh, <laughs> for, well, first, 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 we say, you know, there's no such thing as race. You were all the human race, uh, uh -huh. you know, it's ethnicity. Uh, because terms are important um, and you can't reconcile, uh, uh, you know, uh, race or skin color. Um, you know, you have to look at it biblically. You know, the only thing that can be reconciled is, you know, your soul 
you know, can mm. be reconciled. Um, there's nothing on this side of glory that we're going to do that's going to take away or reconcile, you know, uh, the situation. There's nothing we could do because because we're in a fallen world, because it's a sin and sin nature. Uh, there's nothing we could do. Um, can we stand up for justice? Yeah. Yeah, sure. Can you show me injustice? I will stand up with you. Mm. You show me, you know, uh, uh, racism, you know, because racism does exist. I'm not saying it doesn't exist. It does exist. You show me that I will stand with you. You know, I will say yes. But let, let's make sure that we have like like you said, we're Christians. We're in pursuit of the truth. We're not we shouldn't be influenced by media. We shouldn't be influenced by Twitter. We shouldn't be influenced by any of that. But we should use the word of scripture you know, to, to, to determine our, our view on anything, our mm -hmm. worldview, you know, whether it's uh, the latest, you know, police shooting or whatever, uh, or whatever it may be, which, you know, it, I always, I, I can't remember the verse where it talks about, you know, uh, one opinion seems true until the other one, you know, till you get that second one. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's a Proverbs like 18 or something. Like yeah. That. Yeah. Yeah. So that, I mean, like that. if we just, if we just applied that to what we see in media, you know, yeah. just because it's the first thing that comes out don't mean whatever. So I kind of went on the tangent. But, yeah, I, I, I don't I don't stand uh, with that because uh, I think, you know, we, we won't see reconciliation until glory. You know, mm. we can definitely uh, make strives to make things better. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Again, I will always, uh, you know, uh, stand for biblical justice, you know, which it biblical justice don't matter the color, you mm. know, because it, it could be. Yeah, it, it don't matter. Like like Virgil said, you know, uh, with the whole George Floyd thing. Apart from Christ, we're no, we're not George Floyd. We're the, we're the officer with our knee on the, on the, on his neck. Mm. You know, apart from Christ, you know. So wow. that's something we have to have to consider. Yeah, no, that's good. Yeah, I mean, and that even yeah, even the terms reconciliation, you know, uh, reconciling, you know, one man, Jew, Gentile, this whole thing. Um, there's no. I mean, yes, that is, those are ethnic backgrounds, but obviously those are what the scripture is talking about. Like they're talking, right. they're dealing with this, not um, skin tone. Now, obviously there's culture and favorite foods and language and a lot of other things play into somebody's personality and sure. are often associated with ethnicity, right? Mm -hmm. Not always, right? But a lot of times, well, you know, this group likes spicier food or sweeter food or more fish or whatever well, that's because how they grew up probably because mm -hmm. what their mom ate in utero and you have a taste for that because babies are babies from the start yep. and they're you know getting a flavor and taste for that i mean it's pretty basic but it's it's frustrating when christians i understand the world's going to continue to just march on and produce nothing but lies i understand mm -hmm. that but when christians who say they love christ and love the church and love his word and yet gobble up all this stuff like it's cotton candy. And then they're still wanting more and they've got a headache because of so much sugar. And then they're, they're blaming everything else, but the cotton candy they ate. And it's like, you're eating cotton candy and nothing but cotton candy. Like, <laughs> right. What do you expect? Uh, it's, it's remarkable. Uh, it is. Two, two more things. One, okay. Secondly, um, and there's another one again, because I I, I want to learn and I, I don't think there's necessarily wrongness or rightness with, you know, sitting and learning. Uh, I think being forced to do that, I think, is dumb um, and not having a response or restricting your response. Like, well, look at how much melanin you have, Richard. Not very much. You need to sit down and shut up. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, what's that? Build the bridge, lady. Um, yeah. Latasha Morrison. Anyway, mm -hmm. the black church. What are your thoughts? What has your been experience? Um, like, is it is it essential? Is it not? Is it kind of take your pick? What What do you got? Um, just the black church in general. I mean, <laughs> well, yeah. I mean, just because I I think about the that, whole think, idea. Yeah, I I mean, because it's like again, being from California, there's sure. Korean churches and Hispanic churches. Well, there's a cultural thing, but there's a language thing. Right. Sure. I, I don't I don't speak Korean, so I'm probably not going to go to that church, although routinely do I see, you know, I still get posts for pastorates and things, you know, and, and it's a Chinese church and they want an English speaking pastor or a Korean mm -hmm. church and an English speaking pastor. And so it's like, hey, that sounds great because there's a lot of that talk too. you know, sure. your church needs to be diversified. You need to have this, you know, we and they quote whatever it is, Revelation, what, six or eight or something like that. Yeah. Every tongue, tribe, nation. It's like, OK, that's that heaven. That's heaven. <laughs> okay. And if you live, if you live in a neighborhood and a city with 
you know, all different uh, ethnic groups from different backgrounds. Great. And if people come here, great. But I, I, I scratch my head and I know there's that Matt Chandler thing from a few years ago where I'll take the uh, guy, you know, with the more melanin if he's let, not as qualified. And it's like, how is that not racist? Like, I just don't, like, I just, but then you see the black church. And of course mm -hmm. you see a white church. I actually have a video dropping uh, this week on the white church. It's actually newsflash. Nice. Uh, it's not, it's not, well, it's not a white church at all. It's a cult. It's like some <laughs> like Viking something or other. But the leftist media is kind of portraying it. It's an interview this gal goes and does. And they exclude people. You mm -hmm. have to be of like, um, you know, your Northern European, Northern West European, like Swedish mm -hmm. descent. And it's like, okay, but this isn't a church. Like this isn't even, they're not even, they say they worship multiple gods, blah, blah, blah. But it's still classified as a church. But there's the black church. And I remember Vody Bauckham saying this in, uh, I think it was Fault Lines. Where is that? That's over here. Um and he said, you know, when he was in seminary, he went to the registrar, this and this, and they got a list of black churches. And, and it was like, yeah, sounds good. Like nobody bad in an eye. But of course, mm -hmm. if a white guy did that, like, I just want the churches where all the white people are. I don't, mm -hmm. I don't want anybody else. Like you say that. And I even say that. And I think that's so right. right. Like that's so wrong. <laughs> and I'm not saying the black church is right or wrong. It's just, uh... and, and clearly there's been segregation and other things because right. of it. I understand why. Right. But what are your thoughts? What's your been a, your experience on the black church? Help help me out. Uh, <laughs> I don't, and I don't watching. I don't know if I'm much of a help, man. Um, <laughs> well, you're more help than me. I got okay. nothing. So. All right. So so I'm I'm a I'm gonna scale it back, man. Um, the, the whole idea of black church, like you make it, like you mentioned, was the segregation thing is where it started. Um, and then uh, like you also mentioned about food. You know, you mm -hmm. go you, you eat mama's cooking, but you also go to mama's church. Okay. You know, uh, and so that that is that's just the tradition. Uh, and, and especially in especially in the southeast, um, that's a huge tradition as far as, you know, going to church and going to mama's church. Um, and, and it's funny because we're having this conversation at my current church. Uh, we're actually doing a panel discussion Saturday and I'm on the panel. And, uh, and and it's all the conversations are always about, you know, how do we make it more diverse and how do we make it look more like the city? And um, and I'm like, well, I'm definitely not the man for this answer because, you know, I, I think God builds the church and um, and and he's going to send whoever he wants to send. You know, it don't matter. You can come up with tricks and gimmicks. You know, I've been a part of the tricks and gimmicks world, you know, mm -hmm. on the charismatic side. You can do that. But uh, at the end of the day, God builds the church, man. And, um, wow. you know, I when whenever I was moving to Fayetteville, what I did is I searched for a reformed church. I didn't search for a reformed black church. I mean, I guess you could, but I didn't, yeah. you know, and when I found my church, which is Veritas Fayetteville, I, I watched the service. I watched the worship. I knew what I was getting into. Like, you know, I, <laughs> I knew I was going to an all white church, you know, yeah. I knew that, you know? Um, and so I, the black church thing, I think it's more tradition than anything. Um, okay. As of recent, uh, you know, it's become a, a thing because and, and here's why. And it's funny because <laughs> a good friend of mine, I'm gonna call him out, man. He's my brother, uh, uh, Isaac. Um, no, Isaiah, Isaiah. So probably about four years ago, we were at G3 and Isaiah did this Facebook live. And he was saying, you know, you know, we're going to get on Facebook live and talk about, you know, why we left the black church for reform theology. Like, you know, everybody was like their whole experience, like with the black church, they don't teach theology It's hoop and hollow. The black church mm -hmm. don't do this. Black church don't do that. Fast forward uh, three years later, uh, he writes a book because he gets connected with a different set, I'll say. And he writes a book about the importance of the black church. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, just, you know, I think the, the, the vilification of it, happens as well sometimes people think that when you go to sound biblical theology that you don't mean the black church like okay i'm going to sound biblical theology i i, I mean i'm leaving the black church that's not the case man some mm. of the, the most you know some some really good teachers and, and pastors and preachers are black men in black mm -hmm. churches you know uh i think about growing up in the baptist church i grew up in and they were biblically sound you know mm. they they believe in the trinity you know they you know it, it was so many uh, fundamental things that are there in in the black church quote unquote and it got kind of demonized in the time period you know just just like okay all they doing you know they're doing it with emotion versus you know teaching like you know dr mccarthy or you know preaching like steve lawson you yeah. know 
And so I think that contrast is what kind of caused some fiction. But uh, but, you know, at the end of the day, man, uh, it's God's church. Uh, you know, there, there, there's to, no black church or white church. You know, it, it's, it's, it's just people, man. And, and I don't care. Personally, I don't care who's in there. Long, long as Christ is there, long as the gospel is, is preached, you know, uh, I don't care, man. Me and my wife, we talk about it all the time because we get we get those questions uh, from our, our lovely uh, family members at, at the church, you know, like, yeah. you know, we want to look more like the city. Huh? Do you really? I don't know if you really want the mission. I was kidding. <laughs> but, uh, no, but, but nevertheless, man, um, God builds the church, man. I, I wouldn't be hung up on you know, the black church or the white church or whatever. Yeah. Uh, just a matter of long as, as Christ is being is being lifted and God is being glorified and the gospel is being preached, you know, that that's pretty much all that matters. Yeah. No, amen. Yeah. It's something that's like, it's, it's, again, it's come back and forth with me being sure. living in Louisville for a few years. And there's, there's a handful of um, black churches there, uh, quite a, probably more than a handful, but I always kind of thought, I'm like, what if I showed up with my family like what would happen, Nothing. you know, and just like, you know, like I just, Hey, let's worship. This is closer to our house. Or we wanted to, you know, meet, meet some other people outside our bubble. Cause I mean, everybody gets stuck in our bubble, right? Yep. We all, and we, we kind of, the older we get, the more we're like, ah, I don't really like that. I don't really like this, you know? And then we get comfortable and so on. And, you know, there's mm -hmm. nothing necessarily wrong with comfort, but I think if people are going to continue to, want to be renewed, renewing their mind and sharpened and other things, it's good to at least have those discussions or at least ask the question. That's part of the reason why I even do this because I want to, yeah, <laughs> I want to find out myself. Yeah. Uh, so let me tell you a funny story. <laughs> so, uh, uh, we were attending this, uh, quote unquote black church and, and the whole thing was like, invite, you know, a white friend to church kind of thing. <laughs> it was a thing. It was a thing. That's great. Yeah. And so uh, and, and we did. And then he got up there and, and preached about, you know, <laughs> pretty much kind of demonized white people in the oh, sermon. Wow. <laughs> it was like this is a setup. Like we brought all wow. our friends for you to, you know, because there's some some people that believe that way, you know, yeah. um, and, and 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 teach in that manner, you know. So that that, that was an interesting uh, Sunday for sure. Yeah. <laughs> Don't go there no more. Wow. Yeah. I'll say now, I guess just a sub point of that. And I just got one last bonus bonus question um why is it that so much because i saw even in the bookstore in, in seminary you know there's a few here and there and it's you know the theology of the black church or the reason why you know i don't remember the titles but like why is the black church theology so bad like that type of vein mm -hmm. so why why is it again help help us out yeah um why is that so i mean i don't know i guess the origin um but i do know what's popular in the quote unquote black church is uh i guess more show than uh scripture you know the whole tuning up you know with the b3 and humming the words and all of mm -hmm. that and so uh that that gets people excited and there's nothing wrong with you know exhorting and getting excited you know yeah. but but a lot of a lot of uh pastors uh you know they they don't spend much time actually studying and so, you know, they don't and, and a lot of them don't go to seminary. You know, some of them, I guess, if you rewind back, some of them didn't have the opportunity to go to seminary. And then that kind of tradition, like, oh, you know, you don't need the head knowledge. Just, you know, if you could sing good or, or get the people hype, you know, that yeah. that'll work. And so it, it goes back to kind of tradition, man, that that style of preaching. And so that that created a, a, a style that was pretty much synonymous across most black churches where. You know, uh, you know, you had to tune up, you had to sing, you had to hum, you know, you had to do all of that stuff. And and when you do that stuff, it's not much time for actual theological <laughs> discussion or teaching. You know, yeah. you know, you can't talk about the hypostatic union with the B3 behind you. <laughs> That's you right. Know? Wow. Um, and, and one of the earlier teachers, which, you know, uh, big air quotes, but uh, one of the first guys I ever saw to actually, you know, uh, teach uh was uh fred price um mm. which you know and that's your neck of the woods in cali uh he was one of the first like black guys i saw that actually like walk around and i mean supposedly teach the bible <laughs> uh, i don't i don't know how much was actually going on but it was a different style you yeah. know than, than, than what was on tv 
Um, yeah. You know, and, and again, that's another thing. TV influenced a lot of that, too. When you give, you know, T.D. Jakes, you know, get the big spotlight and he talking about, you know, get ready, get ready, get ready, you know, and take us take one verse and then just go off somewhere else. And, you know, so it's just kind of a style and tradition. Mm. OK, no, that's super helpful. That really is. And it, I mean, again, that it, it really illustrates a lot of, um, you know, helps us. Everybody, I think, take stock of why we do whatever we do. Right. Um, because is it just tradition, why we believe this or why we do these things? Uh, and I mean, tradition, a lot of traditions are great. I mean, a sure. lot of people, we live in an age of, you know, tradition and history. Everything's bad, 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 but it's <laughs> clear, clearly not. Uh, it's, it's a mixed bag like anything else. All right. Last question. And then I'll, I'll give you anything else you want to add. Black History Month. Mm. We're in the middle of it. Mm -hmm. Right in the middle of it. Uh, it's actually, yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, Yes, no. Do you love it? Do you hate it? Do you want? Do you want? Do you want a whole month? I mean, I remember Morgan Freeman uh -huh. talking about it. He's like, "Why do we only get a month?" You know. Yeah. And then I think in that same interview, it was like, you know, stop talking about racism, sort of thing. Like, yeah, I've succeeded. Look at me. Yeah. Um, hey, that's one of my big, favorite. It's not interviews. that big of a deal. Yeah. Yeah, I love that interview. Um, actually, I love when people play that clip. Um, yeah. And I agree. I agree uh, with with Morgan Freeman on that. Um, you know. Uh, what's not popular right now, and I'm gonna say it, I'm an American, you know, mm. I, I'm an American and I love America, you know, I love, I love my country. Wow. Um, I have no, no regrets about my country. I think we're in probably, you know, we are in the best place to live right now, as far as, you know, our freedoms, uh, even though they're trying to trip with the mask and mandates and all that stuff. But other than that stuff, I love it, man. Um, so, uh, but I do. I understand why Black History Month, um, and, and that's because of, of the time of oppression, you know, of mm -hmm. the time where it was, you know, we you weren't getting recognized and things like that. So I, I understand the why, um, you know, and, and, and having that that time to acknowledge, uh, you know, think uh, black achievements. Um, mm -hmm. You know, I, I get that. Um, but for me personally, like I'm, I'm good. Like, you know, let's talk about them all year long. You yeah. know, let's let's talk about, you know, uh, Madam C.J. Walker and, you know, all, all of those folks. I remember I, I remember as a kid, we used to have the black history program at church. And, uh, you know, one year I was Michael Jordan, you know, average, <laughs> I came, came out, you know, I'm Michael Jordan. I averaged, you know, twenty eight point six points a game. You know, I won two championships. But, you know, so, <laughs> I, I, yeah, man, I, I, I think I, I understand the why I personally don't think it's necessary. Mm -hmm. Um because, uh, you know, my my identity is in Christ, man, more than anything else. Um, you know, I'm, I'm a Christian first. Uh, and, and and then uh, then uh, my ethnicity just happens to be black, you know. So yeah. and that's me, man. And you're probably going to get some some comments and all that and holler at me. That's my at right here or right there. Holler yeah, at me, man. Yeah, I'm good. Yeah. Like, like, I'm good around here. Like, come see me. <laughs> no, I love it. I appreciate it. Yeah, that's one of those things kind of like. You know, it is funny that it's the shortest month. Like, why, <laughs> why, why, why it was February? I don't know, but um, yeah, I, I think it was Freeman again in that interview, or maybe another one about, you know, why, why it's just a month, but and Black History is American history, and mm -hmm. it is. And I think that's something that so many people probably aren't going to watch this. You know, the like the super like crazy triggered, you know, alphabet soup people. Mm -hmm. um, who just you know they're only on tiktok i think anymore oh okay uh and maybe twitter you know those types of people you know they have like 40 different piercings and ten, yeah. you know, everything and we won't go there but besides those folks it's like the this is real this is there is real oppression and we need to think and talk and understand the past and not erase it right and i said this in my sermon even uh this last sunday with you know, we have to, the, the past is instructs our present, right? And it, and it, and it does. And it I probably does. just heard that somewhere. I don't know where, uh, <laughs> not to steal it from somebody, if somebody else said it, but it's, if you don't know who you are, your parents, where you're from, I mean, it's like Alzheimer's, right? You forget, you know, where, who anybody is and you're yep. constantly having to remember to tie your shoes and how to eat and shower and just basic stuff. You're completely eradicated. Yep. And I think, Personally, you know, on a more conspiratorial level, I think that's what a lot of people want. Mm. They want us completely detached from 
um, not only reality, right? We see the whole Facebook nonsense, but also from um, just our past and our heritage to say, well, you're going to be more easily manipulated and changed. Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. that's, again, that's a whole nother conversation, but no, sure. I appreciate, I appreciate that, that insight. Um, do you want to add anything else before we wrap up? I'm good, up? man. This has been fun. Uh, yeah. You know, talk, talking about these, these issues and topics. It's a good warm up for me for my panel discussion this weekend too. <laughs> good. Good. And that's at your church. That's good. Yeah. Be yeah, okay. yeah. They're, yeah. They're doing, we do what we call equipping events. And um, this uh, month's equipping event is on the kingdom of God. And uh, I guess the second half is the panel discussion. And they're going to talk about, you know, just, um, I guess, how to uh, deal with, uh, you know, the alphabet community, you know, lovingly, but, you know, through scripture and yeah. then um, how to, you know, how to address, you know, diversity and, and those those things like that. So it's going to yeah. be interesting. All right, brother. Well, I appreciate the time. And uh, yeah, you can find Dwayne. There's his little handle down there. Uh, oh, yeah. I'll put links for the bar podcast as well. You guys can find him there. Uh, but yeah, hopefully we'll talk again. And for sure. Uh, until next time, we'll see you later. All right. God bless. <laughs>